Hello everybody! We are back for our third episode of Food for Thought. Thank you for joining me today. If you have not had the chance already to hit that subscribe button down below, please do that. Your support is truly appreciated. Without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Okay, I am excited for our conversation today. If you cannot tell, I need you to do me and yourself a favor. Go grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper. Grab a pen and a piece of paper. Feel free to just go ahead and pause the video. I'll hit you with a nice little cheese. Okay, and now we are back. Hopefully you got your pen and paper. I need you to write this down. We suffer more often. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Now, take a second. Think about that, right? Ah, uh, when was the last time you had some sort of physical pain? Did you tweak an ankle? Just throw out your back? Think about your last injury. Now I want you to think about heartbreak. Now hopefully you haven't experienced heartbreak in a very, very long time. But think about the process. Think about what you had to go through. Think about how your mind worked as you were going through this heartbreak. Which was more painful, your last physical injury or that heartbreak? Huh. One thing that I have discovered just living my life is that a lot of times I go through these worst case scenarios in my head. As a matter of fact, I found out recently that humans are the only creatures on this earth that have this ability to mentally time travel to mentally project themselves forward and say, what's gonna happen to me next? As a result, we see things like this all the time. Yes! Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. Maybe your athlete looks over their shoulder 10,000 times before they go, or maybe you see their fingers moving, or maybe they have like a, a, a twitch in their leg. I've seen this so, so, so many times. And the reason behind it is that the athlete is standing there and they are mentally time traveling. They are mentally projecting themselves forward and picturing all the different ways. What is the, the quote, 5,000 ways to die. They're picturing all of those things. So my advice, two things for you today. Number one, eliminate can't. Can't, in my opinion, is one of the worst curse words. Can't is a limitation that we are setting on ourself. Stand up for me real quick. Stand up right now. Stand up. That's all good. Come on. Stand here, ready? I want you to say it out loud, out loud five times. I can't. Who that hurts? It hurts me. Go ahead. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I don't know about you, but I'm a very passionate person. I absolutely love what I do. I, I know why I'm here on this earth. I am here on this earth to help people believe in themselves. When I am standing here as a human being and I'm telling myself that I can't, I feel it. It hurts. I, I feel it right there and it hurts. We need to consciously remove can't from the vocabulary of your athlete or athletes. No more. Establish a punishment for the word can't. And now, let me, let me clarify, not just for your athlete, but for you, if anybody in your household, if, if you're a coach watching this, if anybody on your team uses the word can't, 
there is a punishment for that. I don't know if the punishment is running laps. I don't know if the punishment is writing something. I don't know. You, you're the parent, you're the adult in the athlete's life. You come up with the punishment that applies to you. If they catch you saying can't, it applies to you as well. Instead of using the word can't, you have two options. One, bro, I'm not doing it. I, I'm not doing it. It's option one. Option number two, I'm working on it. So if, if somebody's like, um, you know, if you have an athlete working on a standing back handspring and somebody tells them to do a full, the normal response would be, oh, I can't do it. Not anymore. So what are we supposed to say? Well, I'll give you two options. One, bro, I'm not doing it. Nope, I'm not doing it. Or the alternative, I'm working on it. Again, saying that you can't do something is establishing a limit on who you are as an individual. And it's making the mental time travel even worse. So that's number one. Number two, we are going to end and completely eradicate the phrase mental block. There is no more mental block. You are not gonna use that language uh, as it pertains to your athlete or as it pertains to you. It's done. And I have an experiment that I conducted that I highly suggest that all of you conduct. You can go right there, click, click like right here. Yeah, let's click right there. And you can check out that video. So no more can't, no more mental block. Those phrases, those words are destroyed. We are eliminating them from all of our vocabularies. Instead of saying can't, you'll say, I'm not gonna do it, or you'll say, I work, I'm working on it. Instead of using the phrase mental block, call them a fear destroyer. Call your athlete a fear slayer. Give them a cool nickname, because right now, your athlete is dealing with one of the biggest fears or the biggest fears that they will ever deal with, ever in life. And if they learn how to get through this, they will be equipped to take over the world. And this world needs them, as all of us adults know. We need this next generation to be on point. Got it? All right, everybody. I truly appreciate you for tuning into Food for Thought. You got some dishes to do today, bro. Let's get to it. I'll see y'all next time. You know what time it is. Let's see.